So we've seen how we can do a number of things for data processing working with standard Spark RDDs. Uh, because we plot data a lot, I just want to show how we could do some plotting inside of our program that uses the RDDs as well. So this was the code that we have, and currently we have it set up where we have an object and we have a main. Now if I want this to do uh, plotting stuff, I am going to say that extends JFX app and we will have to import that and if we look here you'll see this is the Scala FX JFX app for this to be happy I need to get rid of the main now because JFX app includes its own main I reformatted everything and I am going to use the uh, SwiftViz2 library that I've been working on to, to just plot up some data. Obviously there are other options and you can pick those things if you'd like. I just have a link here uh, to a SwiftViz2 jar file. What I want to plot is I want to plot this monthly data that we did as a little scatter plot, but in addition to having this, this is actually the monthly high temp, which we just printed out last time. I want to also make an RDD for the monthly low temp. Where I'm going to take these and instead of grouping by the T max, I'm going to group the T mins. Uh, and so I have an average high temperature and an average low temperature for every month. And I want to plot both of those together. And so inside of SwiftViz2, there is a method inside of the plot object. And so I'm going to import SwiftViz2.plotting plot. And there's a number of methods here. I want to do multiple scatter plots, kind of overplotted with the same axis. This p data is a sequence that of four tuples. So I'm going to say seq, and we'll come back to that later. The title temps, our x label is month, and our y label is temperature. Of course that compiles at this point, but it's not really happy. Uh, so the sequence, as I said, is two four tuples. The elements in the four tuples are our x values, our y values, the size of the um, the size of the dots that we want, or sorry, color first and then size. So x values for our high temperatures are going to be, uh, this is our monthly high temp, which is an RDD right now. And uh, let's see, here we did a collect. I'm trying to think if I want to collect both of these. And I could do it this way. I'm not certain I really like this. Let's see, monthly high temp. Let's go ahead and let's map it to the first element and collect that. Then monthly high temp. Why do I feel like I have a typo in there? Underscore dot underscore two. Oh, yep, there it is, L before Y. Okay, and then a color. Now I happen to have inside of here, if I just do an underscore there, I have defined some things like I'm going to make these red. Actually, I might, let's go with, I'll just put in a hex. So FF, FF, zero, 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 zero. 
and a pixel size of 5. And this is unhappy because so monthly high temp is an RDD of int to double oh I forgot to do a collect because I do need these to be pulled down and this is one thing to note you can't plot things that are out sitting on the cluster of executors okay if I want to plot it I do have to get it down to this machine I could probably make an argument that this would be more efficient if I took this collect, stored it in a variable, and then worked from there completely on this machine. Just to see that run, let's go ahead and try to process this. And it goes for a while printing out the stuff that we've done before. Oh, it popped up a little window, but I forgot to actually plot this plot. I actually want to do several things here. One is I need to actually render the plot so that we can see it. If I don't do that, it doesn't pop up anything. Also, I kind of don't like all of this output. You'll see we're getting a whole bunch of info output. I can tell the Spark context to print less stuff there is a set log level, and for our purposes, I only want to see warnings or worse, so warnings and errors. That will give us a lot less uh, printouts there. We'll run this again. So with that, this prints some stuff. That's interesting. I Print some stuff to start off, and then once it prints my first printout, you'll notice that all the red stuff goes away. So there's some prints in the setup while it's creating the SC, but then nothing. And, oh, this by default is way bigger than what you can see. We should probably pass some sizes in there. Uh, okay, but there you can see the data values for the high temperatures. And, let's see, month temperature On the renderer, we could make this a little bit smaller. So how about 800 by 600? So it actually fits on our screen. And then I want to add the other data set. And so instead of this is not the high, we'll pull low data for this, or the low temperatures. And I'm not going to color these red. I will color these blue. There are many ways, especially since I have ScalaFX, I could get these uh, ARGB values in other ways. For example, it, the ScalaFX has colors in it that you can ask them for their RGB value. We could definitely use that approach instead. I'm just defining them in hex uh, at this point, kind of for the simplicity of writing this example. But inside of your code, it might be better to do other things. Okay. So, there is the high temperatures in red and the low temperatures in blue for this location for each month going through the year. So, fairly simple example uh, showing plotting just to show that we can plot the data that we get back from, Scala FX, or from Spark using uh, library with ScalaFX.